Hi, Big E. We're, we're having a theme right now. So last time we had Maureen on B-Belt and now we actually have Francisco, who actually we saw in the video grabbing her butt. Yes. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Did you, get all the, asking, did you see all the comments before? Yeah, that, that was funny. Hi, right, so Fran, welcome to uh, BBL by Brozer E. Thank you. Pretty excited, man. Yeah, I'm excited to have him on here. I'm excited that he wanted to jump on now. Uh, he saw what kind of workout I put Maureen through, and I, I think he was like, you know, I want to try something like that. So, that's uh, the first time we, I mean, we, we, we shot Fran before on the channel, but that's the first time we actually have him with us, training with us. Yeah. So, so that's kind of fun. What um, what made you want to come on the show, friend? Well, I saw Marie. She couldn't bear your for a couple of days. I told her I want to try that too. I want to see, see how it feels. So. so, friend, you have a show coming up in ten weeks. Ten weeks, yeah. In in Spain, it's a pro qualifier, right? It's a pro qualifier. We're gonna try it again this year. We tried in 2018. We did it three times. We got the first class. We got the class of heavyweights. We got second in the three shows on the overalls. This time we're gonna try to get the whole thing. You came we'll so close it. last year. I really thought you were gonna get it. You look fantastic, Eric. Yeah, right? I think he's got just an absolutely like, beautiful classic physique, and I believe it's it's pro level. So I think that, I personally think no. I'll be honest. He gets I mean, healed, really man. He gets in he gets sick healed condition, and, man. and his shape is just very beautiful. beautiful, very Bob Paris like, you know. Yes. Uh, and uh, no, it's the truth. Anybody, if, if, if you take look pictures of him and show shape, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I, I think 2020 is gonna be his year. What did you want to focus on this year as far as improvement, uh, real quick, uh, friend? Uh, on the body? Yeah. Yeah, the legs. I need to build legs, the legs. More legs, okay. I told me, I noticed that too. I mean, you know, when somebody tells you something, you already know yourself. I knew yeah, when yeah. Work, I was working. Okay. We are working on So that's what we're doing legs today? We're going to do quads today. Quads. We did hamstrings the other day, so we're just going to do quads. Uh, but I'm sure that he's now going to follow Maureen. I'm going to try to... Maureen couldn't walk for two days, so we're going to try to get him for like three. We'll okay. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Glad to have you to us, friend. And then uh, thanks, uh, good luck in, in, in 10 weeks, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, so the first movement that we're doing here today is the leg press, angle leg press. And as you will see, the technique that we're using is concentric or positive emphasis. So what he's doing here is he's coming down to the bottom under control. He's making sure to stop short completely for one second before he begins pushing to the top. He's going to push to the top over about four seconds moving it like one centimeter at a time, not pushing too quickly out of the bottom. And at the top, he's not gonna completely lock out. I'm gonna jump in there and help him push this set to total failure. Okay, so the next piece of torture that we're gonna give Fran here is the squat machine. First exercise, we focused on the positive portion of the rep. Now we're gonna flip the script and we're going to focus on the negative or the eccentric portion of the rep. And this again is gonna be four controlled seconds down to the bottom and then a good strong push to the top. Somewhere between ex you know, an explosive push but not too explosive. He still wants to use muscular action. So again, he's controlling it for four seconds, damaging it as many muscle fibers as possible, and pushing up to the top using a full range of motion. I'm gonna help him get a good set to failure here. Come on, bud. Let's go. Now you start to work. The set's just starting now. Come on. There you go. Come on. Four seconds. Come on. Count with your head. Push. You gotta have bigger legs this year. Bigger legs. Come on. Push. Come on, close point, point last year, yeah, that's a joke. Now you're gonna win by 10, let's go. Come on, come on. Let's go. I have to be in front of your name. Push! Yep. Come on, stay with it, we're not tired, you get those negatives. Push! One more, one more, one more, I'm with it. Here we go, last one, last one, here we go. Push, 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 ready? I want you to control it, control it. 
Control it to the bottom. Control it. Come on. There you go. All right, guys. This is a real tough one. We're now on a hack squat machine. We're taking a close stance at the bottom because we're going to work the sweep of the thighs of the vastus lateralis. The technique is he's going to be holding at the bottom for four full seconds. He's going to count to four in his head when he gets down to the bottom. One, two, three, four, and then pushing to the top. This is going to put a stretch on the quadriceps and just force him to work. And again, a completely different way like we've been doing for every set. This is a very, very difficult technique to use on any leg movement. I'm going to jump in there and help him go to failure. Let's go, buddy. Come on. That's like that last one. Come on. Four. One. Good. Come on. Big leg. Four. Three. Two. One. Come on. Failure. Yeah, Watch this show. Four. Three. Two. One. Throw card. Throw card. Let's go. Push, push, push. There you go. <laughs> Okay guys, this is the uh, final exercise of this uh, thigh workout today. It's pretty damn pumped. And we're doing something called Merlin Madness sets. So what we're doing here on the leg extension is we're combining some of the techniques that we just used into one set. The first five reps he's doing, he's controlling the concentric or the positive portion of the rep. So as you can see, he's bringing it up slowly over about four seconds. Then on the second five reps, which he's now into now, he's gonna hold the contraction position at the top for a full four seconds. And again, he's hyper contracting. So he's not just holding the weight in place, he's actually squeezing as hard as he possibly can, like he's flexing on stage, hyper contracting the muscle, really forcing every muscle fiber to come into play. So he's gonna do five reps like that. I think this is the fifth one, squeezing. And now we're gonna move into the third portion of the set, which is gonna be the slow negatives. Here we go. We're gonna start here. And he's gonna do four seconds on the way down. One, two, three, four. So now we're using the eccentric portion of the rep. This, of course, whenever you use eccentrics, it damages muscle fibers. It literally tears them apart that they have to be repaired and grow. As you can see, he's working his butt off right now. He's got one more of these. And then in the fourth portion of the set, he just wants to work piston style, whatever he can get. He wants to put as much blood as he can in there. He's not holding any portion of the rep. He's just going for the maximum pump. Everything he can get, even a half reps, quarter reps. You want to go to complete positive muscular failure here and fill the, fill the thighs with as much nutrients, blood, oxygen, hormones, everything you can force in there for growth. This is a very, very difficult technique. That's why we're finishing the workout with this for the final pump, the final destruction. And that's it right there. As you can see, Fran looks pretty spent. <laughs> All right, Biggie, we're done on legs and we're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all dead. You, me, Fran, You know, Sylvia, I'm kind of glad when there's Sylvia. four people because with Sylvia and Fran, it gives us a little bit more time to rest in between sets, yeah, otherwise it's brutal. And you know what, it was needed today because today was a, a really, really brutal workout. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Francisco tell you a little bit more about that. So I want to ask you, Francisco, you, you've you trained with Sanimal, you've trained with Sean, you've trained with a lot of, you know, great, great bodybuilders. How was uh, this, this kind of workout for you today? Tell me your well, impressions. It's different, different, and I think I recommend anybody to try different techniques. So it does, it's always good for the for the muscle and for the body, and also for the mind to, to keep changing. So this one was definitely something different. I really like it. I feel it. I gonna I know I'm gonna feel it tomorrow even more. And I'm, I'm really happy that finally you know you guys have a, a minute for, for you, me. You've done some today. of those movements on your own because I've seen Stanimal, he actually has been tagging Eric. <laughs> Some of the back workouts and all that stuff that he does. So he, he showed you a few tricks, Stanimal, that he, Eric he, knows. He, yeah. I'm lucky enough to, like you say, to train with some of the, you know, best, best yeah. guys in the industry, including you guys. So yeah, I've been learning a lot lately, more in the last few years. And definitely this is going to be, you know, hard in my, yeah, my, in my list to, to work out. Biggie, how was that to train with Fran? He's, you know what, I have to say on a personal note, he caught on on the tempo and, and the techniques very, very quickly. It's not easy, especially on the positive or things like that, for people to get it like right from the first step. He was really good at it. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, what we did today is, a, is sort of like a combination of my spec training system, and then I threw something at the end that I call a Merlin Madness set, which kind of combined the techniques. 
but yeah, I mean, I think the hardest technique for people to get is that positive uh, portion of the rep, yeah. uh, doing them very, very slow. Uh, and I explained it to him in detail. Sometimes people need several sets before they even get close to doing it. He really got it from the first one, so I was very, very impressed. But what really impressed me even more than that was his ability to push really to that failure point. Like he wasn't, he wasn't quitting because the pain, I knew the pain was setting in on you know rep eight or nine, but he was pushing out of near the three, four reps, and even on the hack squats, uh, he like completely failed to the point where I had to like lift him out of the hole. So that takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of discipline and dedication. So that was what really impressed me about Fran. You know Frank? what? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. I've heard the most to me is uh, when you train, like you guys know, you train, the pain is here, but what hurt the most, when you're in the stage, and you know you haven't done those reps, so I read do it here, and save the pain for later, you know? So yeah, <laughs> it, it really hurts when you are there, and you know you can have done better. So whatever you can do here, just go and throw it. I was telling you off camera, don't you feel like whenever you actually have to really think about how much time you can go on the positive or negative, you, you always have to think about the movement continuously right. so that mind muscle connection is always there don't you think that's true uh, which i guess we, we we all train that that type of mindset yeah to, to connect the muscle with the mind so you don't even need to think about it you just do it and you don't think too much about the, the pain of the exercise but yeah. to get it right and do it so if it hurts you know you're doing it right yeah i mean you know depending on the pain you're having like knee pain something like that but right. this muscle pain yeah is, is definitely welcome to the, to the yeah. workout yeah so nine more weeks until uh, your show? 10 weeks. 10 weeks. Ten weeks. <laughs> yeah. So we hope to get you a little closer to the show, maybe at you oh, know, yeah, four, yeah, four weeks out back. or something yeah, like that. Sure, be great. Yeah. And then show you know your uh, your progress and you up for that, Maron? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Whatever body part you want to train, I'm in. I mean, I like I said, I'm a big fan of his physique. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I love the classic bodybuilding physique. He's he's totally classic. I think he's I think he's got a pro card coming this year. And for like sure. I said, he one of my favorite bodybuilders of all time, one of my biggest influences like Bob Paris, yeah. Lee Labrada. Um, you know those types That's of physiques, an yeah, and, and I and I feel like he's after that mold. So I think you know I'm real fan of him. I would love to see him turn pro, and uh, plus also his girlfriend's pro. So that you know, it'd be nice to have them both. I have. That's a power pros. couple right there. <laughs> That's a power couple. And, you know, we just, <laughs> if you didn't see it, I trained Maureen. Go check out Maureen on, on, on GTV. Yeah. She's got the same attitude as him. She pushes to the last rep, and, yeah. and uh, that kind of dedication and discipline is rare to yeah. find. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, she, she pushes me every day. Uh, one of the reasons if I win. And it's time to wear it too. Is it the one I could prepare it's all my meals yeah. Awesome. All right, <laughs> so yeah, thanks thank so much you, for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. Probably you. you were stuck inside today because yep. it's raining <laughs> in Southern California. Yeah, that's kind of rare. It's been a weird week, huh? I know. It's okay. Do you have any questions, Merlin? <laughs> yeah, one question that I thought was uh, probably on some people's minds, which is uh, seems like a basic question, but. Um, somebody asked me, what's, what's my thoughts on the necessity for training to failure on your sets? Um, obviously, as, probably as it relates to muscle growth. Uh, and actually, I mean, it's a, it's a good question because um, you see people all the way training from not even close to failure <laughs> to maybe just a rep a short of failure. Some people train to positive failure and some people will actually go beyond failure and do things like drop sets and force negatives and that kind of stuff. So um, I think that, you know, in the beginning when you're, you know, first start training, just, just the stimulus of working out, training with weights um, and, and being progressive in terms of how much weight you're lifting in proper form, of course, uh, and, you know, moving through the stages of getting more reps with the same weight or, you know, lifting more weight for the same reps. Uh, even if you don't go to failure, you're going to actually grow from that because, again, the stimulus is so new to your body, the nervous system is still adapting to it, the muscle is still adapting, so you're going to get muscle growth like that. Now, when you move into the intermediate stages of training, just, let's just say maybe if you've been training for one or two years straight, um, then I think you have to start at least bringing some of your sets to positive failure, which basically means you can't perform another repetition on your own. Uh, in the same form. So uh, with strict form, you can get eight reps, but you can't get nine. Now maybe you don't have to do that for every single set, but I would say maybe on the final set per each exercise, you might want to go to complete failure. Uh, and I think that that should be enough to stimulate growth if you're using um, you know, proper form and proper technique on all sets. Um, 
it should be enough really to stimulate the body and stimulate the muscles to grow. Then the longer you've been training after that, you become more advanced, you've been training four or five years, you got to start pushing further. I have a saying that I came up with years ago, uh, which was basically, if you want your muscles to grow, you can't whisper at them, you got to scream. So basically that just means, you know, at a certain point, you can't just train the same way all the time, uh, use the same weights, pushes out the same reps. You know, you have to be progressive, and you know, after a while, your strength is finite. So, I mean, eventually, you can't get much stronger. Your joints just can't handle it, uh, and you know, it, the, the, you just won't be able to push more weight in order to progress. Otherwise, everybody would be bench pressing cars at some point. So, you have to find a way to progress without lifting more weight, and that's basically by pushing your sets, uh, all sets to failure all your work sets to failure, not your warm-up sets, obviously. Uh, and maybe some sets beyond failure. So when we go beyond failure, you can do things like drop sets where you fail with a certain weight, you drop the weight a little bit, and then you keep going, you fail again. Uh, you can do things like uh, force negatives, uh, where let's just say you curl, uh, and you can't get any more reps, but then you have a partner help you get the weight to the top, uh, and then you try to resist the negative on the way down so we're stronger on the, ne the negative rep than the positive rep. So there, there are ways to go beyond failure. Uh, and I think this is something that becomes necessary the longer you've been training because if the body is receiving the same stimulus over and over again, which is like whispering at it, uh, then it just doesn't have any reason to adapt and overcome and grow. So basically my answer to the question is, is that it depends on what stage you're in, depends on what your goals are, and I think that one more important aspect of this is, is that, you know, there are people who are willing to train very, very intensely. They just really can push hard, they can focus so well, they can really great at, con at contracting the muscle fibers, but you have to couple that with recovery. So, the other half of the equation is, is that if you're willing to go that extra mile and push to failure and you want to train really hard, and that's your mindset and that's how you treat things, you have to make sure that your volume isn't too high, uh, so that you're doing so many sets that you simply can't recover from it. You have to balance the recovery with the training, and you have to balance your nutrition and your rest with the training. So push harder, more sets of failure as you move along, and make sure that you're taking the proper steps to recover uh, after the workout, and also not doing too many sets and spending too much time in the gym. Awesome. Thanks, Mernon.